Isaac Carr, business and real estate attorney with CCSK Law. In the state of Indiana, if you want to have limited liability, which means you're not personally liable for the actions of the business, and if someone sues that business, they can't get to you personally. They can only get to the assets and money and everything that's in this LLC or corporation or whatever entity you set up to prevent you from being personally liable. In the state of Indiana, there's a number of different entities you can form, uh, such as limited liability partnerships uh, and limited liability companies or LLCs and corporations. When we're talking about what best is for your what's best for you uh, a lot of times businesses do go with LLCs limited liability companies now a limited liability company these were originally formed in 1977 uh, in the state of Wyoming and they really didn't catch on for a long time no one really even the IRS didn't really recognize them as a thing until um, you know over a decade later so when we're talking about this LLC this limited liability company it's what's known as a creature of contract. That means that you can have a lot of this LLC controlled by a contract called your operating agreement. So the operating agreement is the foundational document for your LLC. It can control your ownership. It can control who's controlling the business, so your management. It can say who's getting paid what. It can outline how things are vote and meetings that you have. It can outline even buy-sell provisions, such as in the event of my death, or in the event of disability, or if we want to dissolve, what does that look like? The operating agreement will override almost every single statute uh, that has been passed by that state that governs LLCs. The operating agreement is crucial when you're talking about more than one person because it's outlining the relationship between those two parties. The owners of an LLC are called members, and the managers of the LLC are called managers, if you're a manager-managed LLC, or it's managing members, if it's a member-managed LLC. And your operating agreement talks about the relationship between all of them. How do managers manage? How do members get a vote in big decisions? Right? All of this needs to be laid out clearly in your operating agreement with clear expectations and accountability if someone fails to meet those expectations. Now, some people will ask me, is an operating agreement important for a single member LLC? I mean, it's just me. Yes, it is important to have an operating agreement because if you set up an LLC in the state of Indiana, it costs $97.14 in about 15 minutes and you get yourself an LLC, but that's not enough. Because, again, you're trying to say, if someone sues, you're not suing me. You're suing this entity that I set up. And they're going to respond back with, all you did was pay 100 bucks to the Secretary of State of Indiana, and you think that you have limited liability? No, nope, I'm coming after you personally. You want your response to be able to be, hey, I respected this as a separate entity. I, ha I have an operating agreement. I've been following that operating agreement. right? I have a separate bank account. right? I haven't been doing all of this stuff by myself for you to sue me personally. I did all this so that you would respect this separate entity. And the way I always say it is that if you respect it as a separate entity, a court will respect it as a separate entity. And single member LLCs are more, most likely to be accused of piercing that veil of limited liability, of basically being now personally liable because they didn't treat this LLC as something separate than themselves. So getting an operating agreement and respecting it are incredibly important. At the end of the day, an operating agreement is not required by the state of Indiana, but I'll tell you, whether you have multiple partners or you're just by yourself, it is the most important document that you can get into place for your LLC. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can contact us through our phone, 219-230-3600, or you can find a lot of free resources on our website at www.cccsklaw.com